Chapter 9, Lesson 5, The Fundamental Counting Principle. You will learn about the fundamental counting principle as well as how to find probability with the principle. You can use multiplication instead of making a tree diagram to find the number of possible outcomes in a sample space. This is called the fundamental counting principle. If event capital M has lowercase m possible outcomes and event N has n possible outcomes, then event M followed by event N has m times n possible outcomes. All that's saying is you take however many possible outcomes they each have and you multiply them. So let's take a look at a couple examples. Find a total number of outcomes when a coin is tossed and a number cube is rolled. So if you have a coin, how many outcomes are on a coin? You have heads and tails. How many is that? Two. If you have a number cube, a standard number cube, a die, how many outcomes are on one cube? Six. One through six. All the fundamental counting principle is saying is you take those possible outcomes and multiply them. So the total number of outcomes is 12. So instead of doing a tree diagram or a table or a list, you can find the total number of outcomes by simply multiplying them. Now if a question asks for a sample space, of course you have to show all the possible outcomes. But if it asks you how many outcomes, you can use this shortcut method. So letter B. Find the total number of outcomes when choosing from bike helmets that come in three colors and two styles. So the colors, there's three. The styles, there's two. Multiply them together, there are six outcomes. Letter C. Use the fundamental counting principle to find the number of outcomes from tossing a quarter, dime, and a nickel. Well, there's heads and tails on a quarter, on a dime, and on a nickel which means they each have two outcomes. Multiply them together, you get eight possible outcomes. Letter D. How many outcomes are possible when rolling a number cube and picking a cube, we'll say a block, from four different colored cubes? Well, if you have a cube that you're rolling, there are six sides. And the block has four different colors, so 6 times 4, there are 24 possible outcomes. Letter E, find the number of different outcomes that, be, get, that can be made from three sweaters, four blouses, oopsie, let's just start this one over. We've got, again, for sweaters we have three, for blouses we have four, and for skirts we have six. Multiply them together, three times four is twelve, twelve times six, there are seventy-two possible outcomes. I would not want to write all those down, that's a lot. Letter F. Find the total number of outcomes for choosing a bagel with one type of cream cheese from the list shown below. Well, how many different bagels do you see? One, two, three, four. And I see one, two, three cream cheese. So there are 12 possible outcomes. Now we can use the counting principle to help us find the probability of events. So, for example, letter A, find the total number of outcomes from rolling a number cube labeled 1 through 6, so our cube has 6 outcomes, and choosing a letter from the word numbers. Well, how many letters in the word numbers? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then find the probability of rolling a 6 and choosing an M. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how many possible outcomes there are. To do that, we multiply our six sides of a cube times our seven letters. We get 42 outcomes. 
Now, they specifically are looking for the probability of a 6 and an M. Well, a 6, there's only one 6, there's only one M. This means this can happen only once, and it would be 1 out of 42. This is a lot quicker than listing out the 42 outcomes and then figuring out a 6M. Letter B, find the number of different genes available at the gene shop. Then find the probability of randomly selecting a size 32-34 slim fit. Is it likely or unlikely that the genes would be chosen? So here we go. Waist size, I have looks like five different outcomes. Length, three. And style, three. Multiply those together. Five times three is 15. Times three is 45. So I know there are 45 outcomes. Now, I want the probability of 32 by 34 and slim. Well, there's only one 32, 34, and slim, which means there's only one out of 45 outcomes. So our probability is one out of 45. It also asks, is this likely or unlikely? One out of 45? I would say that's pretty unlikely. Letter C. Two number cubes are rolled. So cube one and cube two. What is the probability that the sum of the numbers on the cubes is 12? How likely is it that the sum would be 12? Well, there are six sides on cube one and six sides on cube two. Multiply them together, we have 36 outcomes. And we want to know the probability of a sum of 12. Now, you have two dice. To get a sum of 12, you need a 6 and another 6. There's only one thing that can make 12, a 6 and a 6. So it would be 1 out of 36 total. So only one of them would give us a sum of 12, and that'd be 6 and 6. Letter D. A box of toy cars contains blue, orange, yellow, red, and black cars. So we have a color. A separate box contains a male and female action figure. So this is an action figure, and actually this is really cars. What is the probability of randomly choosing an orange car and a female action figure? Is it likely or unlikely that this combination is chosen? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five colored cars. And action figures, we either have male or female, so two. The total number of outcomes is 10. So the probability of orange and female. Well, there's only one that'll be orange and female out of a total of 10 outcomes. And one-tenth is the same as 10%, so this is unlikely.